Hello again. Uh, this is the third tutorial about using uh, FLTK uh, through Rust. Uh, this time I'll be using the uh, MSYS uh, platform, uh, also using the uh, GNU toolchain, the Rust uh, GNU toolchain. So uh, let's uh, create a new uh, project. And you'll also learn launch uh, VS Code. So uh, this time uh, we'll be creating a uh, an application which has networking and uh, some uh, custom widgets. So uh, for the networking we'll be using, uh, first of all we'll use uh, FLTK, this time uh, it's going to be version 0 0.7.14 and uh, we'll use the uh, bundled uh, flag also. Since there's a bundle for uh, the GNU toolchain on Windows. And we'll also use uh, Tokyo and uh, the request uh, crate, so uh, answered to handle the JSON. <coughs> we'll use uh, version 1.0 and the uh, features uh, we'll use the uh, JSON derive, the uh, uh, third derive. And request version 1.10 and the features uh, JSON and Tokyo So this should take a while. So basically we're just following the uh, request tutorial uh, using uh, Tokyo full request uh, of the features uh, JSON. Also we're using uh, CERD. So if you check uh, the uh, FLTK uh, repository, uh, you'll see an example for a custom widget. So this basically just uh, derives a FLTK widget and uh, implements uh, the overrides the draw function method and the handle method. Uh, we'll be using a frame, so uh, we won't have to uh, override the draw method, but we'll override the handle method. Uh, let's just go ahead here and. Uh, also, <coughs> use LTK, importing all the modules as always, and uh, let app equals half. Let's run window, and uh, let's see new. Give it uh, 600, 400, and uh, to do's. So this just creates a window, the, my, the weller plate for creating a window. Um, We'll also be using the uh, DRF uh, and DRF mute since uh, we're, we'll be creating uh, like uh, basically our own uh, widget. Uh, so whenever uh, the uh, our custom widget is called, it can be called as if it were a real uh, widget with the same methods as uh, any widget. 
or in this case the frame. So uh, let's start uh, just creating uh, something like that. So uh, just uh, select that button. Okay. So this built. So as you said, uh, in the example uh, it uses a widget. We'll be using a frame. So let's call it this frame. Frame. So this way we can avoid just uh, overriding the draw method. And uh, if we uh, we'll be using a pack, so we don't need the x and y. Just a width and a height and a label or a title. So, uh, let's say Zero, then swipe height and title. So we'll be uh, overriding the handle method here. The example uh, basically separates it into a separate function, but uh, just to do it in the same function. So uh, let's just say. Uh, Uh, first of all, uh, let's set the frame. This is going to be a uh, frame type. Our flat box, which is a flat rounded box and flat. And uh, if we uh, override the handle method, since uh, frame don't actually have uh, callback triggers, uh, we'll just use the handle. So uh, we'll just create a uh, mutable clone of the uh, widget. So since uh, FLTK widgets have uh, interior uh, mutability, it means that uh, these can be used inside uh, closures. We just need to clone them. The cloning doesn't actually create a new copy of the uh, widget itself. It just uh, copies the pointer, um, <clears throat> which is the method also used uh, in other uh, widget toolkits, such as uh, the uh, Rust bindings for uh, GTK. So uh, we'll just say uh, frame handle. So this takes a box closure, as we've seen before, uh, except this takes uh, an event, and we'll be handling the event here. We'll just be handling the uh, event push to change the color of the widget since we're creating a to-do app. So uh, this has to return a true. And this returns a false. That means that uh, the uh, widget uh, didn't handle the event, and FLTK will handle it uh, for us or ignore it. So uh, we'll just uh, check the uh, uh, the color. So we'll be using two colors, uh, green and uh, red. Green for uh, done. Uh, uh, tasks and dread for unfinished tasks. So uh, if the color is uh, green, we say uh, just uh, set the color to be red. Else. <coughs> I'll just also restart the uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, just before this, uh, we'll just set the default color 
to be uh, red. And after redrawing, we'll try. We'll always uh, redraw the window. And uh, just return here the. Just uh, just to get the uh, IntelliSense. So uh, one. So while this runs, uh, we'll just be implementing the uh, DRF and the DRF mute. So just uh, import the standard. And uh, you're right. And this type target will be a frame frame and implementing giraf and giraf mute. So giraf uh, is a uh, constant. Oops. Which returns a constant as well. So this should build. And uh, yeah. So we will be using this. So let's go uh, just change the default uh, location of the window. And uh, let's uh, at first create a uh, a pack. Which starts at ten uh, uh, from each uh, border of the window, and uh, from the top, let's say zero and uh, five eighty. And if we'll add a uh, button below. Uh, Let's give it a height of 40, so uh, this has no title, and pack end. So we'll be filling the pack uh, through the uh, button. And the uh, button will be within the window, but uh, outside the pack. So. Uh, Let's use a choice, which is a drop down menu basically. So it's in the uh, menu. Choice, new. Yeah. And uh, if you take the middle of the uh, window to 60, and at 360 with a height of 40, so that will be 400 with 80 and the um, height as we said 40. And uh, let's say user, okay, okay, set color, say cyan for example. And the uh, window uh, set color uh, white. <coughs> oh, let's see this now. Okay, so we didn't populate the uh, choice uh, uh, widget. 
So uh, we'll actually be using the uh, JSON placeholder, uh, which is basically a fake, uh, a fake web API. So uh, as we said, we'll be using the to-dos. And as you can see, that this returns a uh, JSON uh, with, with basically uh, 10 users. We can, since it's a small JSON, we can cache uh, the JSON in the beginning. For example, we'll perform a uh, HTTP request and get the JSON in the beginning of the uh, application, but let's uh, act as if uh, we're actually performing a query with each uh, callback. So uh, here, uh, all widgets implementing the menu trait basically have the same uh, uh, the documentation have the same uh, interface uh, for adding uh, the uh, options you can say so a menu you choose uh, choice so this implements the menu trait and it's basically add or insert there's also an emitter uh, variant, add emit and insert emit, which takes a sender and a message. But this uh, will just take a uh, for self uh, title, a shortcut if we're using a shortcut, a flag if uh, we're using a flag, and then the callback for each item. So uh, since we know, for example, that there are uh, 10 users, we just uh, for user and 10 <coughs> a string uh, will be uh, the uh, this is the uh, user to string this was a uh, The uh, flag will be uh, the uh, shortcut will be none. The shortcut uh, is, for example, when someone clicks uh, control, whatever, or a certain letter, character, etc., I will uh, actually invoke the callback of the uh, item in the menu. And the flag, this is in the menu. module, the flag will be just uh, normal, and then the callback, I think, okay, so box closure, so in here uh, we need to basically uh, spawn we go back to uh, the uh, quest plate uh, we'll have to spawn the uh, their quest um, as a task so we'll just be using this to see everything. And Tokyo spawn and sync move. Let's actually create a uh, struct for the uh, for each uh, item. 
uh, that we're querying here, you can see uh, the uh, request uh, is actually using a hash map, but uh, we use a vector of uh, uh, our own struct. So uh, struct, let's say item, and this implements. Uh, a user ID ID right here uh, title This uh, let's say it just takes the uh, a back of uh, items. So uh, let's just check if this works. The format right. Sync. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. So this actually builds. That's good. Something with the uh, annect missing field user ID. Uh, just see what's uh, wrong here. Yeah, sorry, it was the uh, capital D. So, part of one. So no panics. Okay, good. So back to the uh, application. So uh, whenever uh, we add a, uh, we get a response, just uh, we'll clear the pack, and then we can actually uh, iterate over the uh, items. And check, for example, uh, item user ID. Actually, we're comparing, uh, checking if the uh, user ID is the same as the uh, user here. So uh, just go and add a uh, frame or the our custom uh, widget. So this is that. Button. Here, as we said, we don't need the X and the Y because it's uh, going to be added to the uh, pack itself. So uh, the width uh, 
will take the width basically most of the window. So let's say 580 and 100. And the uh, label of the frame will be the uh, title of the item. And the color uh, that is uh, going to be of the, of the frame uh, will depend on whether the task is uh, completed. So if item completed, since this is a boolean, and since we've implemented the uh, DRF uh, and the DRF mute, we can call set color directly. So color green. And if it's not completed, okay, we can actually call this fine. Let's see if this works. And um, yeah, we have to actually clone, as we've actually cloned here, uh, so we can uh, we clone the, uh, the widget, which actually performed just uh, basically a meant copy of the pointer uh, to be able to handle it within the uh, the closure. Uh, we actually need to do the same with the back. So. Uh, just create a like pack, post pack clone, and so we basically have to perform the uh, the same thing twice. Okay, so uh, just uh, since we are clearing, clearing it here, this has to be mutable. This basically does nothing since uh, these uh, widgets aren't added to the pack. So uh, at the end of each, uh, so here we can actually add pack add, and uh, we can add the uh, name. So uh, even though uh, the uh, our custom widget uh, DRFs and uh, DRF mutes the uh, A frame, uh, this doesn't uh, make it uh, doesn't automatically make it implement the uh, widget uh, trait. So uh, just uh, since we own the the uh, custom widget, we'll just uh, okay, just name. And uh, actually, at the end of this, uh, this should we should redraw also the window, and we also need to. This also needs to be mutable. <coughs> okay. So uh, we we're seeing something. Uh, just change the spacing of the. Uh, the pack. So uh, pack set spacing. Let's say five. And let's see this.
Okay. So this looks better, and when we click something, it changes the uh, the color of the uh, plane. Uh, there are more items, I think. For example, for one, uh, there are more items. So yeah, no more than four or five. So uh, we'll need a scroll uh, widget. So let's add a scroll here. Let me scroll. It's in the group uh, module. So this will be the same uh, width, I think, as the window. So let's do this. And uh, 360. So uh, basically the same uh, height as the uh, pack, and uh, zero zero. So basically, it starts at the zero coordinates uh, of the window. So upper left border and uh, title, and here uh, we'll say scroll and. Okay, so you get a scroll bar, and uh, we'll be changing this a bit, uh, changing some of the coloring. So the uh, scroll widget needs to be white, and uh, okay. So uh, sometimes we need a double window. Uh, to reduce uh, the flickering just on Windows. So this actually means a double buffer. And here, uh, so let's add all of this stuff uh, later. So here, back set spacing, uh, choice set color. Also here, the scroll set color. Uh, white. We can also change the uh, make the uh, scroll widget uh, just show the vertical uh, scroll bar. So uh, using the scroll uh, set type and scroll type vertical, uh, you can say always. And uh, we can actually also modify the scroll bar itself uh, by actually uh, getting the scroll bar. So scroll bar, scroll, scroll bar. So basically, there are two uh, methods. Like uh, there's another method, etch scroll bar, which takes the horizontal scroll bar. Uh, since we only have a vertical scroll bar, we'll just take uh, the scroll bar itself, the vertical one. Uh, so uh, we can just uh, also uh, set the type of the uh, scroll bar. So set type. And here, it's actually in the evaluator module. So uh, we'll say uh, scroll bar type. And uh, we'll say vertical. Uh, nice. Let's see how this looks. <clears throat> okay. Okay, not bad. You can also change the color of the scroll bar and the width of the scroll bar. So uh, let us say here, um, scroll uh, set scroll bar size uh, to five, for example, and uh, here uh, scroll bar. 
set color to uh, color black. <clears throat> okay, so this looks uh, a bit nicer. Um, okay, I think uh, we can also improve the uh, performance here. Uh, so let's just do format and uh, just let me check here. Um, yeah. Who's uh, user ID? Okay, so uh, user ID equals and here uh, the user, which is uh, this. Yeah, so, okay. Let's just format this. Okay. Nice. So these are the uh, unfinished tasks, and these are uh, the green ones are the finished tasks. So basically, uh, just to run down of uh, what we did, um, we imported uh, FLTK, of course, uh, stored for serialize and deserialize uh, to derive uh, our custom uh, types, request to perform a uh, HTTP uh, GET request, and Tokyo for the runtime. So uh, you can see that uh, this is the, uh, sorry, there's a lot of noise. <clears throat> this is the uh, struct uh, that uh, just maps the uh, JSON we're getting, user ID, ID, title, and completed, and uh, basically you just uh, fill this uh, in a vector here whenever a uh, uh, callback uh, Whenever the choice uh, button is, uh, the choice uh, widget is uh, actually uh, vote. This this does doesn't block the UI. So when we change, for example, to this, this doesn't block. Uh, this is because uh, it's using an async runtime, the Tokyo uh, runtime, async function main, and the Tokyo spawn. Uh, function. So uh, after that, uh, we create, for example, our own custom uh, widget, and we implement uh, the uh, basically override the handle, just the event push, and uh, the frame, as you've seen, is the uh, rounded uh, flat box, and we implement the uh, duref and duref mute uh, to get. Uh, the ability to call the uh, widget traits uh, methods directly, like uh, here, set color, and basically uh, in the main app or the main thread, uh, we create the app uh, window, uh, a scroll, just to be able to scroll down uh, the uh, all the widgets that we create with the pack, and uh, we have a choice uh, widget. And uh, that's basically it. the rest is basically styling. So uh, 
if we, for example, try to change the uh, the style of the application, uh, the theme of the application, let's see how this looks with the GTK theme, for example. Uh, with I think uh, the long uh, completion time is because of the uh, surge rate, maybe. Okay, so this doesn't look so bad. Um, okay, I think we'll stick with this. Um, we can also uh, make this uh, vertical and not always, so uh, it shouldn't show in the beginning of the uh, application. So let's see. I think using a uh, third uh, causes this uh, long compilation time. Okay. So uh, I actually didn't notice, so turn it on again. So you can see there's no uh, scroll bar here. Okay. And it appears when we. Uh, actually invoke the callback when the uh, scroll uh, widget is populated uh, through the path widget. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching uh, and uh, hopefully I'll create uh, some more content soon. Bye.